Hi. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, how can we work with a different form of the quadratic relation. And in this case, it's called the factored form. The reason why it's called the factored form is because just like if I asked you to um, factor the number 30, right? Well, you would say that 30 is 2 times 15, which would then be 2 times 3 times 5, right? So you see how what we did was we took the number 30 and we broke it down into things that are multiplied by each other, right? Well, that's actually exactly what factored form is. It's things that are multiplied by each other, right? 1 times 2 times 3. So some factors multiplied by each other. So that's why it's called the factored form. So here we go. Uh, for the relation y equals 0 0.5 x plus 3 times x minus 9. State the zeros. Okay? So the zeros are in fact the x-intercepts, right? Remember talking about that? The zeros are the x-intercepts. So how do we find the x-intercepts? Well, we set y to 0. Okay? Remember that? So that means that we're going to take this y and we're going to make it zero. So let me just get rid of that for future. So what that means is we're going to say zero is 0 0.5 times x plus 3 times x minus 9. Okay. Now on our investigation, we saw that this actually gave us one of our zeros and this gave us another one of our zeros. Okay. Now, the reason why that happens is because if I want 0 to be the answer, and I've got a bunch of things multiplied to be 0, well, that means that one of them has to be 0, right? So if I have three numbers, something times something times something else equals 0, well, one of these things has to be 0. There's no other way. I can't multiply three numbers that are not 0 and get 0 as an answer. So what that tells us is that Uh, what that tells us is that either the x plus 3 part is 0, which means that x equals negative 3, because I subtract 3 from both sides, or the x minus 9 part is 0, which means that x equals 9. Okay? Now, notice that I'm not setting this equal to 0, because 0 0.5 is equal to 0 0.5. It can't be equal to 0. Okay, so now let's plot our 0. So x is negative 3, and x is 9. So over here, okay? Now, the axis of symmetry, okay? Well, we talked about the fact before that the axis of symmetry is always between the two zeros, right? So we know that the axis of symmetry is a, is a uh, vertical line, and it's right between the two zeros, okay? So right now, I can just eyeball it and say it looks like it should be there. But more importantly, what we could do is, since we know how to find the point between two points, it's the midpoint, right? So we know that x equals the one of the zeros plus the other zero divided by 2, right? The midpoint formula from the first unit. So negative 3 plus 9 is 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So we get x equals 3 is the axis of symmetry. x equals 3 is right where I drew it. Okay? Now, if I want to state the optimal value, well, I know once I know the x coordinate, I can figure out the y coordinate, right? Because I have an equation. So y equals 0 0.5 x plus 3 x minus 9, and now I'm just going to plug in this 3, and I'm going to say 0 0.5, 3 plus 3, and 3 minus 9. So that means 0 0.5 times 6 times negative 6, which means negative 18. Okay, so there's our optimal value. Okay, so the optimal value would actually have us extend this graph down to here's negative 12, negative 14, negative 16, negative 18. And the optimal value would be on the axis of symmetry. Okay, So that gives us our graph. OK. 
m, and there's our graph. So we drew the axis of symmetry, we plotted the optimal value on it, and we had the graph go through the zeros, okay? Now the final thing is the direction of opening. Well, the A value is positive, so that means that the direction of opening has to be up, and that actually matches what we drew. Okay, so all those things have to match. Okay, so let's go through that again. So we found the zeros by looking at the factors and setting each factor equal to zero. We found the axis of symmetry by finding the point in between the two zeros by averaging them out. We found the optimal value by subbing in the axis of symmetry, finding what the y-coordinate is. We plotted those three points and we got our graph, okay? So let's see in general, here's our, what we call factored form. So the zeros are found by setting each factor equal to zero. So what that means is x minus r is equal to zero means x is equal to r. So that letter right here is always going to be one of our zeros. So that's going to be a zero. And also x minus s equals to zero means x equals s. So there's our other zero. Okay. The axis of symmetry, we can always find by finding the midpoint of the two zeros. So add the two zeros together, divide them by two. And once we have the x coordinate, the optimal value is just the y coordinate. So we can find that by subbing in the x coordinate into our equation and finding the y coordinate. Okay. So now let's do some practice. So we want to graph this. Okay. So the first step is going to be the zeros, okay? So we know that x minus 2 equals 0, which means x equals 2. And we also know that x plus 4 is 0, so x is negative 4. So x equals 2, x equals negative 4, okay? The axis of symmetry, well, x equals the point in between these two. So 2 plus negative 4 divided by 2. So 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So x equals negative 1. So my axis of symmetry goes down here, right? Now my optimal value is y equals negative. Now instead of the x, I'm going to sub in my negative 1. So that makes it negative, negative 3 times 3. So negative, negative 9, which is 9. So negative 1, 9. There's my uh, vertex. There are my zeros. So there's my graph. All right? So vertex, zeros, graph. Okay? And notice that our graph opens down, and my A value is, in fact, negative. So that works. Let's try one more. So here's my relation, right? So my zeros are x is negative 1, and x is negative 4, right? So x plus 1 is 0, x is negative 1, x plus 4 is 0, x is negative 4. My axis of symmetry negative 1 plus negative 4 divided by 2, which is negative 5 divided by 2, negative 2.5, okay? So that means my optimal value is y equals 2 times negative 2.5 plus 1, negative 2.5 plus 4, which makes it 2 times negative 1.5 times 1.5, and that makes it negative 4.5, okay? So let's graph all these parts. So 0, 0, negative 1, negative 4, uh, axis of symmetry, negative 2.5. My vertex is at negative 2.5, negative 4.5, so negative 2.5 and negative 
4.5. And that gives me my graph, which opens up, which is good. And it looks like that. OK. So that's it. That's the whole process. Find the zeros, find the vertex, and plot it. All right, that's it. Make sure you submit the questions. See you in class.